really are uh, very committed to showing non-mainstream art, to showing art that might be a little bit more at the periphery, and uh, to supporting artists whose work might not be seen otherwise in our region, or might not be seen in a traditional museum. We're looking at that really across everything that we're doing. And I think like many art centers or art museums, over time the idea of being more diverse and inclusive has moved kind of from the edges of our programming to we're really trying to put it front and center at the core of everything that we're doing. In the um, mid-90s, when we first started thinking about outreach, at the time we were not going beyond the walls of this building. And so we started thinking about where are there underserved audiences in particular that we can focus on. And we're not a large staff, so we knew we couldn't cover everything. So we identified seniors as one target audience. You know, art can be as meaningful at the end of life as in your early years. And so we send an art therapist or an artist out to nursing homes and senior centers where they have a chance to reflect on their lives and then the residents make something that's very meaningful to them. We also have focused on middle school at-risk youth and the Museum School Partnership is one example, but we also do a, a summer arts apprentice program where we bring in young people. They work in our studios here. They have a chance to meet both artists and uh, tradespeople who are working in those areas and it's an opportunity for them to think about a possible career path. We also are working with uh, homeless shelters and we have a program called the Dreaming Pillow Project. So we go in and work with the kids who are temporarily in a shelter and you know their housing situation is very uncertain. They may be there for a week or two or they may be in that facility for a year. And so the artist works with the kids to dream and imagine other possibilities and the kids kind of talk about what their dream might be and make a drawing. It's transferred onto a, a fiber pillow and sewn and then that's something very tangible that they can keep in front of them as a symbol of what their dream is but also it's a very comforting object that they can you know take with them when they leave. Sometimes there are things that can't be put into words but can be expressed through art so it's um, a really valuable release for these kids to be able to create something tangible that expresses that. That's why we're here and you know I feel so blessed that I've been able to work in the arts uh, world. It's just been an amazing experience for me but I don't want it to just be for a narrow group of people who like me were lucky enough to be exposed to art at an early age or who were given exposure in school or other opportunities. Craft is so accessible. Craft has this long history of people have parents, grandparents, other relatives who were makers and they relate to the functional history of craft. It's an easy way to get people in the door to experience art, but again, once they get inside, they realize you know, wow, this is more than my grandmother's doilies. This is some amazing contemporary work. I know that we're all creative. It's in the DNA. I know that it's part of the human experience. And so my job is to make art available to everyone and to help them understand that it's a tool. It's a resource that can lead to a better life and, and better understanding of themselves. Art does complete us. and. I want everyone to have that experience.